Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Elder Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always an honor and a pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And we are so excited about each and every one of you and, and we thank God for you. We are continually to keep you in our prayers. We we want to just encourage the body of Christ today. Uh, we need encouragement like never before. I do believe that um, right now uh, it is imperative for the body of Christ to stay in prayer. Stay in prayer. Hear what God is saying to you as an individual hear what he is saying to us as a whole and so today what we're going to we're going to talk about uh, uh, one of the the attributes one of the names of God we're going to take a look at Jehovah Jireh that's right Jehovah Jireh meaning the Lord will provide so buckle up, let's get into a place of redirecting our thoughts, uh, shifting the atmosphere. Let me tell you something right now, we need to shift the atmosphere from a place of worry, from a place of panic, from a place of depression and frustration. We are the body of Christ. and. Uh, we are here to bear the infirmities of the weak. We are here to encourage. We, we're we here even to share a word of faith to compel the unbeliever. We are here to come unite, united in the spirit and to remind each and every one of us about our Father which is in heaven. One of his attributes, one of the names of God is Jehovah Jireh. We shared some of these names yesterday and as I was preparing for today and asking the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us on what we would share with you on today, I began to think about God our provider. How no matter the circumstance, He will provide. That is who He is. He is Jehovah Jireh. We'll be back in just a moment. We're going to give the meaning of Jehovah Jireh. We're also going to take a look at some scripture texts. We're going to share with you Genesis 22nd chapter. We're also going to look at Deuteronomy, blessings of obedience. And then we're going to go over to 2 Chronicles 36 and uh, 22. God will provide. No matter the circumstances, God will provide. We'll be back in just a moment. If you have just tuned in, you have tuned in to The Balance of Life, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Uh, we, on yesterday, extended a invitation for those of you who are in ministry. If you're looking for information, tools to help in um, getting the Word of God out continually without any interruptions, please feel free to email us at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. There is no charge for this information. Let me tell you something. I, I do not uh, need this for financial gain, but I do believe that we are the church and there are avenues uh, that we can set up in place to help your ministry continue to minister the Word of God to your flock and even to those to the ends of the earth. There are some avenues that you can take uh, with uh, little to no cost to you. No, I don't want you to send me anything. This is no financial gain for the balance of life or even for Angel Ferguson's ministries. No financial gain whatsoever for us. Uh, 
it is to benefit your ministry. Uh, some tips on how you can utilize social media. Utilize avenues such as internet radio. Your uh, parishioners can have access to you yet ministering the Word of God, teaching the Word of God live. Uh, there are several avenues in which you can partake in. It will not cost you a dime, especially if you have a cell phone and you have some internet access. There are some things you can set up and get rolling. That way, the Word of God is not hindered nor stopped. But uh, we are in a, a place right now where uh, gathering at the physical building is not an option in areas but the Word of God must go on forever it said prophecy must cease will cease tongues will cease but the Word of God will stand forever the Word of God is continual it needs to go forth even until the ends of the earth so once again if you need some information some assistance and some avenues in which you can set up for your ministry there is no financial obligation in order for you to get this information. Uh, it's it's something that uh, laid on my heart by the Holy Spirit on yesterday. We will continue to invite you to partake of this information. Our email address is thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com and uh, we will work today to get that information on our website uh, just in case uh, you don't have the opportunity to email us and you don't uh, have the time to wait for a response uh, email us check out our website our website is www.angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com we will get that information over to you also once again our email address is the balance of life one at yahoo.com and our email address our website address I'm so sorry is www.angelfergusonsministries simplesite.com all right let us get over to a word of God that we're going to share with you today we're talking about Jehovah Jireh Jehovah Jireh is our provider that who he that that's who he is he's always been that there are certain times in our lives that uh, it's introduced to us as new he's always been the provider he's always been uh, the creator so let's take a look at the scripture let's take a look at Genesis 22 and I want to back up let's go to the 22 and 1 let's go there because we're talking about Jehovah Jireh our provider and uh, I believe we have been granted permission that we're going to go over our 30 minute time today because it's time to teach okay it's time to teach uh, sometimes we just need to take you know step back and really dig in and dissect the word okay so Genesis 22 and 1 this is in one aspect that God showed himself to be the provider and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him Abraham and he said behold here I am and he said take now thy son thine only son Isaac whom thou lovest and give thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him let me tell you something here God is telling him what he wants him to do he said offer thy only son 
offer him there for a burnt offering. Well, that during that time, we know that uh, as we read the scripture, traditionally, the burnt offering was a lamb. It was a sacrifice. But here God is testing Abraham. Listen, you have instructed me to come out from my brethren, from my kinsmen, from my family. And you said that you would establish me. You also gave a promise that my wife and I, who are well stricken in years, would have a son and heir. And you provided that. You've you shown yourself faithful to the promises. And so now you are instructing me to take what you have promised me and give it as a sacrifice. Verse 4 says, Then on the third day Abraham lift up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Abraham had some faith in God because he gave the men some instructions. He said, you, you stay here. Me and, the, me and the lad, me and my son, we're going to go up for this sacrifice but we will return. And so he he knew that God, the provider, was going to see them going in and see them coming out. That's some faith. Even in times like these, where we are right now, we must remember, as we go into uh, different circumstances, trials and tribulations, that because of the God that we serve, because he is Jehovah Jireh, because he is, oh God, he, he's, let, let me get over to some of these names. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is God. He is omnipresent. He is El. He is El Shaddai. Oh my God. He is uh, Elohim. He is El Rohai. Uh, the, the El Rohai, the God who sees me. He is Elohim, the all powerful one. He is El, the strong one. He is El Shaddai, the all sufficient one, the God of the mountains, God Almighty. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is the I Am. And what we're talking about today, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord provide. He is Jehovah I Am, the one who is the self-existent one. He is all-knowing. He is full of counsel. He is consistent. He is faithful. He is Jehovah Jireh. And here, here he tells his servant, he tells Abraham, listen, I want you to go and, and that which I promised you, I want you to give it back to me. How many times has God blessed us with something and he yet wants us to give back to him what he has blessed us with? After all, he's the one who provided it. If he asks you to sacrifice what he gave you, it's for a reason and he will provide he just wants to know if we're willing to give or if we will take what he has given us and hold on to it so precious or even if we will exalt it above him he is God that will provide Verse 6 says, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Yes, here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire in the wood, but there, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering and Abraham said my son God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering so they went both of them together here Abraham is yet walking in faith 
He's yet walking in faith. He's yet believing. You know what? Uh, I am prepared to do what God told me to do. And he's going to pro- provide everything that is needed. The key here is that Abraham was obedient and that he believed God. He trusted God. He trusted that God will provide. Why? Because in times past, God had proven himself faithful and consistent unto Abraham. And they went to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Now though that was in those times. We do not serve a God now. Uh, God now is not asking anybody to sacrifice their children that's not what God is requiring of us now God requires our obedience in um, submitting our will unto his submitting to share the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, not taking materialistic things and placing it before him uh, that is what God requires of us now. So now in this day and age, the enemy, Satan, will send a demonic spirit to tell people to sacrifice others as well, you know, their children. That's not that's that's not the sacrifice that God wants now. So and I, I'm saying this so that there is clarification If you are hearing a demonic force or a a, a voice telling you to sacrifice your children, that is a demonic spirit. This only happened during this one time. That is not the sacrifice that God wants now. Right now, God wants our submission to do his will, which is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. He wants us to be obedient to that. All right, let's move forward. Verse 12 says, verse 13 says, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So, what does Jehovah Jireh mean? When we come back, we're going to look at the definition of Jehovah Jireh. We'll be back in just a moment. Here at The Balance of Life, we would like to extend an invitation to you to become partners in prayer with us. There is no financial obligation to become partners in prayer. Let me tell you what that's all about. Every Tuesday, we go into intercession for our partners in prayer, our listening and our viewing audience, even for those who send in special prayer requests. There is no financial obligation. If you have a special prayer request, all you have to do is email us at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com and we will add you to our prayer list for partners in prayer that's all it takes your prayers go over to our prayer team Uh, it's only vital for our eyes we intercede on your behalf Uh, we do uh, reach out and I do make contact and and talk to our partners in prayer I do appreciate uh, my partners in prayer let me tell you something my my uh, prayer partners prophetess Yolanda Lee George Prophetess Melissa Kelly, Pastor Valerie Wilson, and there are 
others, uh, Apostle Naaman Wilson Jr., uh, our partners in prayer. Uh, let me tell you that when we prepare to go for revival and instructions that God is giving me, especially on this last one for the oil and the prayer cloth, I sent out um, my my prayer partners uh, the instructions that God gave me and ask them to connect with me in prayer and uh, then I also send them a report of what God has done let me tell you in that one week of revival in Georgia between two ministries uh, our first count was over 40 bottles of oil and uh, prayer cloths um, but before we left, uh, we we went over that number, and that was within two ministries. So I thank God for the obedience on doing that. I appreciate uh, my partners in prayer, my prayer team, and and if they need me for prayer, listen, they they text me, they call me, they email me, uh, or guess what? We pick each other up in the spirit, and there's nothing like getting a a text or a call from your partner in prayer to say, hey, you're in my spirit, and and da-da-da-da-da. It's nothing more like it being connected in the spirit, so I greatly appreciate everything that they do. And so uh, that's our prayer team for the balance of life. Uh, once again, if you have special prayer requests, please email us at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. Every Tuesday we go into intercession. That's a day that uh, we intercede on your behalf, asking nothing of ourselves but interceding for you, for healing, for deliverance, for salvation for your loved ones spiritually and naturally, that your needs are being met, that you grow into spiritual maturity, that you receive the, re the revelation of God's Word. That is our desire for you, that you reach your full potential in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, every Tuesday is for partners in prayer. You're more than welcome to join us. There is no financial obligation whatsoever to become partners in prayer with us. Email us today at the balance of life one at yahoo.com. If you've just tuned in, you have tuned in to The Balance of Life. I am Elder Angel Ferguson. I thank you so very much for joining us today. And let me uh, remind you that if you are a ministry and you are in need of finding some resources in order to get the Word of God out to your parishioners, please feel free to email us at the balance of life one at yahoo.com and we will get you over some vital information some links that uh, there is no uh, financial obligation for us you do not have to send us anything we're not asking for any monetary uh, reimbursement for sending you this information uh, we just want to make sure that uh, as a shepherd you have the uh, the tools and the, the right information to continue to feed your flock and there are countless ways that you can do that um, if you have with your cell phone and, and social media you can set up um, YouTube you can set up uh, there's there's radio links internet radio uh, there's other internet uh, television stations that you can sign up for and uh, you know we we do have Facebook live and and there are some other vital tools that you can use there's Periscope uh, there is the the conference lines with which also has video conferencing available also so we can still set up even if it's from the comfort of our homes or even if you know the uh, the shepherd and two individuals can go to the the the, the church set up do a live feed, minister the Word of God, teach the Word of God, I should say, share a word of faith, have prayer, so that you're still connecting with your parishioners. Uh, we will provide you with some links. All you have to do is email us, thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. That's all. That's it. And subject is ministry tools. We'll get that information to you with no problem. And so we are talking about uh, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh 
is our provider. And for some, we might say, well, what does Jehovah Jireh mean? Jehovah Jireh is one of the many different names of God found in the Old Testament. Jehovah Jireh is the King James Version's translation of Yah Yireh and means the Lord will provide. And we are over in Genesis, the 22nd chapter. We started at the first verse, but over in the 14th verse is where Abraham actually says, and Abraham called the name of the place, of that place, Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. It is the name of memorialized by Abraham when God provided the ram to be sacrificed in place of Isaac. And so Jehovah Jireh, my provider, if you think back over your life where you know if it had not been for the goodness of God, to provide what you needed it would not have been so even now in the midst of what's going on upon the earth know with the surety that as you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior you have access to God you have access to one of his attributes being Jehovah Jireh, the God that will provide. He is also the God that healeth thee, the God that heals. He is the all-powerful one, Elohim. Whatever you need him to be in your life, he will be just that but we have to allow him to be that in the Bible's commentary for Jehovah Jireh it says this mean this name means the Lord will provide from God's test of Abraham we learn that and we're going to go over six things that we learn from this God sometimes tests the faith of his children I'll read that again God sometimes tests the faith of his children our faith is tested actually faith is a mirror of what we declare and decree faith says this is what I'm standing on I have spoken it I said I believe it it is a part of who I am. It is what I hope for. Faith comes along to test your words. Will you stand? Will you, the words that you have allowed to come out of your mouth, will you stand on those words until they manifest? Faith is things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I'm going to hope for this thing. My faith says I'm going to stand on it until it comes. My faith says it's not actually in the, the thing itself, but the one who promised it to me, which is God. So our faith is in God. Testing must be considered an honor in God's kingdom. Here, time after time, God found that he could trust Abraham. He found that he could give Abraham an assignment and Abraham would, would be obedient to it and that he would follow the directions of God. And so each time, as you can see within Abraham's life, the test grew. Um, they became more uh, cumbersome, if you will. They became a little bit difficult each time. Now, to start off, guess what? I want you to leave your homeland and from amongst your people, I want you to get from amongst them. That's a hard test. Another test, as we mentioned before, is knowing how uh, 
it vanished in age that him and Sarai, you know, her name was Sarah, were that God would promise them a seed and heir. Well, they both knew that they were past childbearing age, but that was a promise from God. Now, did they waver at times? I'm going to tell you, yes, they did. But God yet proved him himself. He yet allowed the heir to be born. But here was another test. Even when it came to Lot, his brother's son being his nephew, to separate from them. When Lot got into trouble, uh, Abraham, he, he asked permission. He went to rescue Lot at one time. And then he even asked, you know, that they be covered and allowed to be delivered when uh, the angels went over to Sodom and Gomorrah. The test. Tests come to try our faith. Number two, God may be trusted to provide his presence, grace, and all that is necessary for any circumstances that lies within his will. Let's read that again. God may be trusted to provide his presence his grace, and all that is necessary for any circumstance that lies within his will. His will. So when we relinquish to allow the will of God to happen in our lives, God's presence is going to be there. Why? Because we're doing the work of the Lord. We're doing what he called us to do. We're on an assignment. And when we are doing the assignment of God, guess what? He's going to provide all that we need co to complete what he has us doing. We're doing his will. We're not doing our will. So he's going to provide the tools, spiritually and naturally, what we need to carry out his will. He will provide. He will provide. He is Jehovah Jireh, the God who will provide. He will provide. I can't say that enough. Whatever you need to do the will of God, he's going to provide it. We just have to allow him to. But yes, he will provide. Number three, God often works his redemptive purpose through the death of a vision. Mm. He may allow things to happen in our lives that seem to destroy our hopes and dreams because we need to do things his way. So let's read that again. God often works his redemptive purpose through the death of a vision. He may allow things to happen in our lives that seem to destroy our hopes and dreams because it's, it's, we're doing things according to the will of God. A great example and an understanding on that is reading over in Habakkuk 2, starting at the first verse. Before you write the vision, we must listen to hear what he will say unto us. And when we are reproved, meaning when we are corrected, it's not our way, but it's his way. That we can get a clear vision when we relinquish what we want to see, what we want to hear, and what we want to do. And we say, Lord, have your way. Direct me through the Holy Spirit. Then we will find that his way is not our way. That the, uh, our, our thought process will never measure up to his. And, and the way that we think that we might have done something, let me tell you something. He will shift you and you'll be doing it another way that you could not even imagine or think of and sometimes never even heard of but that's when we relinquish to the will of God number four after a trial of faith God will confirm strengthen establish and reward the believer let's read that again we're talking about Jehovah Jireh we're talking about our provider after a trial of faith, God will confirm, strengthen, establish, and reward the believer. Why? Because you trusted him. Because you were obedient to him. 
And when we do this, He can confirm. He can reward us. When we do things according to His will, according to His purpose, according to His way, He will reward us. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Number five, the way to find true life in God is through the willingness to sacrifice all that God requires. And so that becomes so very personal to ask God, what is it that you require of me? What is it that you require of me? Because what he requires of me, he might not require that of you. All depends on the assignment upon your life. It's what's required of us. But let me tell you this. There is something that is required. And it is our faithfulness. It is our obedience to do the will of God. Now that is standard for everybody. No one is exempt from being faithful and obedient. That's the basis of the requirement. We're all obligated to do that. I'm going to take a, a quick break. We're going to do number six. And then we're going to just take a quick look at another way that God provided. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to The Balance of Life. I am Elder Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. We invite you to email us at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. You can ask us for a multitude of things that you see on our website. Uh, you can ask us for a copy of the Life Applications, which we mail out every single Monday. You can sign up for that for free. Our newsletter, The Balance of Life, you can request that for free. Also, you can uh, ask us to include you as partners in prayer. Email us for that as well. Our email address is thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. Also visit us on our website at www.angelfergusonsministries.simplesite.com. Today here on The Balance of Life, we are talking about Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He is a provider. He really is, if we will allow him to be. And he is God. He is God alone. He is creator of heaven and earth with the Son and the Holy Spirit. They are the Trinity. They are one. They are intertwined, yet they have individual attributes. And we're talking about the attribute of God today, one of the names of our God, which is in heaven. Heaven, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And so if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can accept him today. He says over in Romans, the 10th chapter, if you would believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. And, and, and it's the believing in the heart. And then we all have to grow under spiritual maturity. But that gives you some access to the provider. We're going to pick up uh, talking about the meaning of Jehovah Jireh. And we are on point number six. After a test of suffering and faith, the outcome of all the Lord's dealings toward the believer is very pitiful, compassionate, and of tender mercy. If you would like a copy of these six highlighted points concerning Jehovah Jireh, Email us today at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. These points have scripture texts with them. It is six highlighted points. Jehovah Jireh, the meaning of Jehovah Jireh, six very important key points that we'll send out over to you via email. Subject matter, Jehovah Jireh. That's all you have to do. Send us out a request at the Balance of Life 1 at yahoo.com. Subject matter would be 
Put in today's date, March 19, 2020. And we're taking a look at Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Episode is number 24061399. Once again, email us today at the balance of life one at yahoo.com. Taping or live broadcasts number 24061399. And that is on Jehovah Jireh. And we will email you a copy of those six highlighted points. Other areas where God is our provider. And we, I don't think we have time to go through all of these. We have about mm, four minutes left on the air. Deuteronomy 28. Our instance is through our obedience. So Deuteronomy first it Deuteronomy 28 first verse through the 14th verse talks about the blessings of God. And those instances is where God is telling us through our faithfulness and through our obedience to the voice of the Lord how he will provide for us. Those are promises of God. So Jehovah Jireh means God will provide. It is also looking at the promises of God. What will God provide for me? And and how do I get God's provision released in my life? See that right there is just good. That uh thank you Holy Spirit for releasing that and and we do plan on coming to you live on tomorrow. So I believe that on tomorrow, if God prolongs his return upon the earth, we're going to pick this up. We're going to continue to talk about Jehovah Jireh. Uh, and, and that's the question, how, and I'm writing this down, how can I um, have the provision of God released? In my life. Wow. That's good. That's going to be our topic for tomorrow. I just wrote that down. That's absolutely good. Um, and then that way we can definitely dig more into uh, Deuteronomy the 28th chapter first through the 14th verse. Another area where God provides it's when um, after the testing as we read from the six key points how God will release um, the provisions after our testing to reward us for our faithfulness. Well over in 2nd Chronicles 36 and 22 we're talking about King Cyrus. Now, King Cyrus was not a believer of God, but uh, the purpose of his life was so that he could provide and allow a way of rebuilding for the temple. And it says here now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kings kingdoms of the earth hath the Lord God of heaven given me and he hath charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem which is in Judah who is there among you of all his people the Lord his God be with him and let him go up so we're going to dig more into uh, the attribute the characteristic the name Jehovah Jireh on tomorrow and we do have a question that is posed how can I have the provision of God released in my life? And I'm going to tell you it has to do with our obedience and our faithfulness unto him. We're coming to a end of today's broadcast. We did extend the time by 15 minutes, giving 45 minutes of airtime today because we just wanted to share some words of encouragement with you during, you know, what's going on within the world today. But, you know, we love you. 
always, always stay encouraged. We believe in the potential in you because we know that God created you and he has a great work for you to do. We love you here at The Balance of Life. Stay tuned for tomorrow. Let's dig in the word together. Have a blessed, blessed afternoon. Give God the glory because he is worthy to be praised. And remember, God is your provider. He is Jehovah Jireh. Have a great day.